Two Republican candidates for the office of Knox County Public Defender wanted to pick up on our conversation about attorneys and caseloads. You said 28 uh, attorneys in uh, the office right now. What is their typical caseload? So our caseloads are oppressive. We, we have roughly about 10,000 cases a year that come through the office. Um, there, are, there are these things called National Advisory Council caseload standards that were put out by the American Bar Association Department of Justice. And those say that no one lawyer can reasonably be expected to handle more than 150 felonies or 400 misdemeanors in any given year. And that's not combined, that's not 550 total. And we've got lawyers that are sometimes running double those numbers. And we asked about the, the counselors, the social workers mm -hmm. who are a part of this program, and it's my understanding that only a small percentage of clients still have access to those is it 10 percent yes we have we have staffing that, that roughly 10 percent of our clients are able to get um, social workers attached to their case so we, we don't most of our clients 90 percent we simply don't have the resources to, to to give them we have been able to show that when we can give clients social workers that they are less likely to reoffend so is that something that you would like to expand both of you if you were in this position absolutely and when i interviewed with governor lee i had talked about that um, and uh, he indicated that he would like to have some, some additional data, and we're actually involved with a, a study with Harvard Law School's Access to Justice Lab where we were doing a double-blind study of those who get social workers and those who don't. And in, we're, we're about to finish that randomization process in March, um, and so then we're going to study all the individuals that came through for the next two years, and it's the first study of its kind in the country, and so we should have some hard and fast data where we can show how much of a taxpayer savings we are giving uh, to the citizens of Knox County by having the social work piece. Ms. Lee, 10% now, what would you like to see it as far as the number of people a having access to uh, a counselor, social worker? I would like to see it as much as we could get it. I'd, I'd just say that what I wanted to clarify is mm -hmm. not sharing social workers, but that we would have our own, you know, for the private attorneys, because what happens now is when we go to the jail or we get a client, they're saying, where's my social worker? because the ones in the jail who have the public defender's office, you know, where's your caseworker? You don't have one. So they feel like they're at a disadvantage. So I would like to see if, you know, if there's funding for the public defender's office for caseworkers, social workers, there should be for citizens that are, you know, entitled to attorneys as well. Let's shift to this whole issue of criminal justice reform, which has almost become a buzz phrase in the state of Tennessee. I've heard it uttered in other states. Governor Lee says he's interested in that. I'm not quite sure based on the state of the state where he is. So here's what I'd like to know, and then John may also sort of nudge me and ask another question about it. What does criminal justice reform mean to you in terms of doing the job of defending somebody charged with a crime right now? Eric, why don't you start, and then Ms. Lee, if you could finish it. So I think a really good starting point for that, uh, Governor Lee had appointed a task force um, to address criminal justice reform, and they issued a report uh, in December of this last year uh, where they, they laid out several recommendations, and, and many of them I find encouraging. Um, for example, that we're not, really, we're not really using our resources in the most effective and intelligent way. Um, one, one recommendation was they, they talked about the, the lengthy probationary sentences sometimes that people get on, that you, you get a, a probationary sentence that's 10 years in length, for example. And that the vast majority of people that are going to violate, they're doing so in the first couple of years. And so by continuing to supervise those individuals in years three, four, five, all the way through 10, you are having less resources for the people when they're at their most vulnerable in years one and two. And so one of the things that I found very encouraging is the talk of shortening the amount of time someone can be on probation. Um, there are a number of other uh, recommendations in that task force report. I, I highly recommend anybody to read it. It's, it's uh, really fascinating. And in, in the next legislative session, they're going to be taking some of that up. Um, but, you know, criminal justice reform, I, I think, speaks to a very wide area of the criminal justice system that, that we aren't doing things in the most evidence based way. I'm a very strong proponent in looking at statistically what works, what do we know works, what saves the taxpayers money, what results in less incarceration rates, and employing the data in an intelligent way. Your perspective, Ms. Lee? Oh, we agree on that. Mm -hmm. um, I think any any attorney that does criminal defense would totally agree with those. Uh, we, we, you know, rehabilitation is less expensive than incarceration. Where do you disagree? Because both of you have similar views, and, and I'm just curious from either of you, and we'll start with you, Ms. Lee, where do you think you will be different than Mr. Lutt? Well, I think having coming in as a member of the private bar, you can bring some fresh ideas, and from a woman's perspective, there's never been a woman running that office, so I think women can bring different ideas, fresh ideas. Not changing it dramatically. I don't have any plans to go in there and change staff and all that type of thing. We agree a lot on a lot. 
I just think some fresh ideas. Mr. Lett? So, specific areas that we disagree on, I think the, um, I think the idea of using the public defender resources uh, to sort of fund things in the private bar, I, I think are, are really problematic and I think um, could potentially get us into, into some trouble. There, there are also uh, state and county rules regarding what you can and can't spend your funds on. And so I, I guess I, I strongly disagree with that. Now, if, if the state wanted to um, provide some, some resources for, for private counsel, I would certainly not be opposed to that. Um, but it is, it is a can of worms and very thorny to say that that should be coming from the public defender's office. We're going to have more of our conversation coming up on Inside Tennessee. Stay with us. We'll be right back.